I, nearly adult female, recently found out my father has a second family. My mom has since filed for divorce. My father's been trying to get me and my brother, teen, to have a relationship with his other kids, half-sisters, nearly adult and one year younger, and half-brother, tween. We were having dinner at my father's. My father let us know he was delighted to have all his kids in one room. The half-sister mentioned that she was thrilled she had the opportunity to meet us. She always had to watch from a distance, but is happy to have a relationship with us finally. I was not engaging in the conversation a lot. In fact, I was getting annoyed, but I was able to keep my annoyance unnoticed until he called half-sister Tolti, and she confidently told my brother that it was her special nickname. My brother looked at me in horror because he knew I was about to lose my temper, and my dad knew too. He knew that he had messed up. Again, I got up and calmly told my dad that he was dead to me. I told his kids that they're awesome, but I don't want to have a relationship with them. I walked out and my brother chased after me because I was his ride home. On the way home, my brother told me I overreacted and that it wasn't that serious. I interrupted him and said that he could also be dead to me if he didn't choose his next words carefully. He just said, never mind. That nickname is special to me. My grandpa, mom's dad, gave me that nickname because he thought it was extraordinary that I was able to walk at seven months old. He never called me by my name, always by my nickname. He even said my nickname repeatedly when he was on his deathbed. It's so special to me, even though it just means small in my language. A language that I know my father doesn't speak. He only speaks English. And I'm not going to share that nickname with someone who doesn't even know what it means. Especially not my father's other kid. My brother knows how much that nickname means to me. I maybe shouldn't have said that to him, but he also shouldn't have said that to me. This is why I feel like he deserved it. My brother's really upset, and my mom feels like I shouldn't have reacted in that way. But I feel justified in my reaction because it was my special nickname, and my father just gave it to somebody else. My brother didn't show an ounce of sympathy for me. My mom said that my father and brother don't have to be my enemy. I agree, my brother isn't my enemy, but my father will be my enemy until the day he dies. So, am I the idiot for telling my brother that he can also be dead to me? Not the idiot, and I'm totally stealing the if you don't choose your next words carefully line. This is a messed up situation for sure. Learning that your father has a second family, including daughters your age, one of whom he gave the same nickname as you, and you shouldn't mind either of those things? What your father did was absolutely disgusting, and your brother's action after was no better, especially when he saw you were about to lose it when it was said. You have every right to feel this way, and your brother should most definitely apologize to you for being so insensitive about it. I can respect OP's position. Her biological father knew exactly how bad he messed up, and earned his daughter's fury. Betraying his family for so many freaking years and then somehow managing to betray his daughter worse? That's not something that'll calm down for decades at best. Most likely never. The brother, on the other hand, just screwed up, not betrayal. OP is justified in her fury, but should cut the brother appropriate slack after calming down. Most likely brother is just trying to please everyone and calm everyone down, including himself. He's probably hurting quite a bit. Dad's been hiding it for 18 years. He had to get the other woman pregnant, so 17 years plus 10-ish months minimum. Also, both women were pregnant and had kids at the same time. And the affair kids knew about them? This man isn't worthy of being dog poo on someone's shoe. The affair family knowing the entire time was the creepiest part. It sounds like the premise for a horror film. Honestly, I think OP's family is actually the alternate family. Geez, he not only lived a complete double life for almost two decades, he even managed this weird arrangement where family one knows about family two, but not vice versa. How the heck did that not blow up in his face right away? The guy's a master of deception and duplicity. Idiot for sure. But I have to admire anyone who achieves something that I'd find impossible. I, male 28, grew up with extremely strict parents. They put me under a lot of pressure growing up and were very controlling. My parents and family in general are image-obsessed people. When I was choosing between colleges, they forced me to go to the most prestigious option I had. I didn't want to go there. 
but went because I was young and felt like I had to. So I already had a bit of a rocky relationship with my parents. Once I got to college, I partied hard and developed a drinking problem. Once I graduated, I thought I was invincible. Unfortunately, I had a few personal tragedies and my longtime girlfriend left me. Eventually, I went off the rails. I was barely getting by at work and struggling to hide my issue. I hit rock bottom when I was arrested after I turned 23. I had to call my parents to get me out of jail. I messed up bad and I knew it. My boss had me take a leave of absence until my court issues were settled. I decided to get my life together and started healing. I started off by beginning therapy and got control of my issues. The charges eventually got dropped and I had everything expunged. After just a year, I fixed a lot of my issues. My life started going back to normal when the big incident happened. I was at a cousin's wedding and I had a drink. At this point, I was healthy enough to have a drink every once in a while, and it wouldn't be an issue. However, my parents got angry when they saw I had a drink. I told them to calm down and that I was done drinking for the night. They would not stop bringing it up, and my mom, in front of a lot of my family, revealed my arrest. I left immediately, and she made a scene. From then on, a lot of family gatherings were awkward. A lot of my family treated me differently and treated me like a loser. My sister no longer wanted me around her daughter, which also happened with a few of my cousins. At this point, I was back attending multiple therapy sessions a week. Around this time, I fell in love with my wife, and many things changed because of her. She helped me get through a lot of my issues, and we eventually got married. This past February, we welcomed my daughter into the world. Everyone in my family wants to meet her, and I'm a bit uneasy about that. I went from the family loser who everyone avoids to the guy suddenly everyone wants to be involved with. I let my brother meet my daughter and one of my cousins meet her. My parents have been nagging me to meet her and I've been making excuses to avoid it. Finally, my wife asked why and I told her all about the wedding and how they outed me and my issues to everyone. My wife was sympathetic but said it was four years ago and things might have changed. She suggested that I just forget about it and move on. I think I'm right in holding the grudge, but I guess she has a point. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Have they apologized? I bet no. It's amazing how often forgiveness and be the bigger person are pushed when it comes to people who never admitted being in the wrong, showed any remorse, or apologized. Some people go their whole life relying on sweeping things under the rug until the next time. If I was publicly shamed like that, it would take more than four years to sweep that out of my immediate memory. Time does not heal everything, and this was an egregious breach of trust by your parents. They're not just image-obsessed, but more concerned about how they look than their child feels. It's a safe bet that their controlling parenting had a lot to do with you going off the rails once you were free of them. OP, does your wife come from a pretty healthy family? If she does, she'll have a hard time understanding why you don't want your family in your life. Far too often, we see spouses undermine boundaries because they simply cannot comprehend the things that caused the split with your parents to begin with. I highly recommend that you communicate the harm and danger they've been to you and could be to your kids. My young teen female, stepsister, same age, and I don't really get along. Last year, my dad got me a cat. He's really sweet, but mostly blind and doesn't enjoy being picked up without warning. My sister isn't allowed pets per her dad. She also hates being touched. I don't know why, but it's just a thing. Anyway, she's somewhat obsessed with my cat. He hates it, but he's too sweet and doesn't do anything but let out panicked meows. She thinks he likes it and he's talking to her. I've told her to leave him alone. I've spoken to her dad and my mom, but she just won't listen. My dad has even spoken to her about it. She just won't leave him alone. So last week, I took matters into my own hands. I told her on Monday to leave him alone and mentioned how she doesn't like people touching her without asking. She told me he was fine, and if he didn't like it, he'd scratch her. So that morning when she picked him up, I hugged her from behind while she was doing it. She panicked a little and asked why I was touching her. I told her every time she picked the cat up, I'll hug her because clearly she needed some contact. She put him down, and when she picked him up later that day, I did the same thing. She cried that time, and I felt a little bad. That continued until Friday when she stopped picking him up. She's mad at me still and has blocked me on everything. My dad gave me a whole conversation on consent 
and how we really shouldn't violate people because of animals, but hasn't made anything to punish me. Obviously, her dad is angry about it, but he went to my parents rather than to me, so I don't know how that's being dealt with. Mom is annoyed the most and has told me I need to apologize or I won't be welcomed back to her house. I told her I wouldn't apologize until my sister did. She, like my dad, said cats aren't equal to humans. I do feel bad for her, but I feel worse for my cat, and she wasn't listening when I told her no, so I just did the same back. I know I'm in the wrong regardless. Violating consent is bad. I just want to know if I'm solely in the wrong. Am I the idiot? I mean, kudos to you for thinking outside the box to solve the issue. You went to your parents, they ignored you. Asked your sister, she ignored you. You then solved it yourself. Not the idiot. That kind of thinking will get you far in life. Solving issues with unconventional solutions, even if it sometimes gets you scolded, is a good skill. I'd love to have you on my team. So you took a butt chewing and your dad isn't wrong but he isn't getting too harsh with you because he's proud of you for actually solving it. So if you have to apologize, here are some words I'd recommend. Dear sister, I apologize for touching you without consent. I will try my best not to do it again, but I admit I get excited every time I see you hugging my cat and am compelled to hug you. I definitely won't feel the need to hug you as long as you don't pick up my cat again. Something along those lines. Your stepsis either has medical issues that spur crap behavior, or she's a brat, or both. As someone with autism, believe me, we can be jerks just like anyone, but her behavior is for her dad to work on, not you. By ignoring her behavior, the adults in her life are making it worse. None of this is your fault. Did everyone just gloss over her mom's comments? OP threatening you with, in your words, I need to apologize or I won't be welcomed back to her house is majorly messed up and not how a parent deals with a child. Not the idiot for that comment alone. You're left to your own means in your mother's home. If a parent is that big an idiot to their kid, they don't get to talk about consent or respect. This sounds bad, but I can explain. Me, 22 female, and my sister, Alice, 21, are very close in age and get along very well. However, Alice and I do not get along with our older sister, Beth. She has spread so many false rumors throughout our family and always found a way to be a victim in every way imaginable. Beth claims everyone's out to get her and has never been held accountable. Beth is 26 and doesn't have a license, car, house, or valid ID. She moved across the country to get away, but still needed my mom to pay her rent. I could keep going. Last year, sister Alice was trying to get pregnant, Beth was jealous after finding out, so she started taking prenatal vitamins and texting Alice, taunting her, saying things like, I'm older, I should get pregnant first. Let's see who gets pregnant faster. Every phone call she had with my mom, she would joke that she might be pregnant, constantly sending pictures of the vitamins as if it were a race. When Beth would visit, she would bring a bunch of dollar store pregnancy tests and leave them all over the house so everyone could see. Beth never ended up pregnant, and Alice had a baby boy. Fast forward to two months ago, Beth FaceTimes Alice in the middle of dinner and is just holding up a positive pregnancy test with a smirk on her face. Alice hangs up because they never got along to begin with and doesn't know what Beth wanted her to say. Beth later calls my mom saying that she's pregnant and doesn't know what to do and that she doesn't know who the dad is. She started meeting men off Tinder to get pregnant. My mom is worried and doesn't know what to think and starts talking about maybe Beth should move back into the house. Less than 24 hours pass and I ask my mom if Beth is going to the doctor and my mom says she lost the baby, almost crying. Beth claims that she took another pregnancy test and it was negative. Therefore, she had a loss. When my mom told me she lost her baby, I couldn't keep a straight face. Beth just really blew me away with how far she'd go for attention. My mom went off on me and told me to go away. In those 24 hours between tests, she reached out to two of our cousins who were also pregnant at the time and announced her pregnancy to them. Beth never spoke to them and has also talked crap about them, but ran to them to tell them about her pregnancy. Now Beth is sharing a post all over Facebook about losing her baby and joining lost pregnancy groups. From my understanding, pregnancy isn't confirmed until an ultrasound. So am I the idiot for not caring? 
Was she truly pregnant? As a woman, I would say yes, but knowing Beth personally, I just can't accept that it was ever real. Not the idiot. I think Beth has some problems. She sounds entitled and only wants to get pregnant in order to take the attention Alice is getting. Also, using Tinder to get pregnant was a horrible idea. Her behavior is not just attention-seeking and drama-mongering. She's a danger to herself and others. Not the idiot. I think you should stop worrying about whether or not it's true or real and what Beth's whole life situation is. One of my favorite phrases is, not my monkeys, not my circus. If she wants to be in these Facebook groups, she can. If she wants your mom's support, she can get it. You and Alice don't need to be involved. And I think you know and have known for a long time that distance from Beth is good for you. Beth is a mega idiot. As someone who's had multiple pregnancies lost, I can tell you that there's no way she got a negative test 24 hours after a positive unless it was a false positive, which is very rare. If she had a loss, the hormones don't suddenly disappear and take days or weeks to show as a negative, depending on how far along you are. Honestly, this disgusts me when people pretend to be pregnant and have a loss for attention. Beth needs mental health help. Three months ago, I, nearly adult male, started working part-time at an ice cream and sweet shop after school. One of my co-workers, 20 female, lives in the same neighborhood as me. When she noticed that I have a scooter motorcycle, she asked if I'd be okay dropping her off at her house because she had scary experiences with some Kareem, Uber equivalent in my country, drivers at night. I told her no problem. And so whenever she worked an evening shift, I would drop her off after work. Last Saturday after we closed, she was with her friends outside. While I was on the scooter, I asked her if she was going to go back to her house. Her friend started laughing and she was visibly embarrassed. I took the cue and left. The day after she called me saying I was an idiot for embarrassing her with my stupid beat up scooter in front of her friends, that she obviously didn't need a ride for me that night because they were going to a party. She has an evening shift tomorrow and I don't intend to take her back with me anymore. I know this might be petty and stupid, but I've been working and saving for a year and a half to buy the scooter with my parents helping me. So if someone mocks it, it's like mocking me, even though I know it's a crappy scooter. Not the idiot. Just say someone might see her on it, and you don't want to embarrass her any further than you apparently have. She's embarrassed by you and your scooter? The fact that she only needs you when nobody's looking is disrespectful. No more rides for the coworker. They made their bed. Time to lie in it. Yeah, it actually makes me really sad to think this nice kid was helping her out and she thinks so little of him that she was embarrassed that he spoke to her in front of her friends? Who raised her? And she's older than him too. Somehow that makes her actions and attitude even worse. If she finds your generosity embarrassing, then the gallant thing to do would be to cease offering it.